Hello and welcome. I recently picked up a new addition for the workshop, a Worker B Z1 milling machine, CNC milling machine. Um, I thought it would be a good addition to the workshop, even though some would consider it uh, being a heretic using computers to do woodwork. Um, but instead of just assembling it and showing off some projects with it, I thought it'd be a good idea to show how this thing is assembled and who knows, perhaps show some good tricks to getting the thing assembled. Um, it should take approximately 12 hours to assemble according to the website. So I'll see how I compare with that and see how much struggle I get with it. So as you can see, I'm using the dining room as a assembly area. And in this big box right here, up along the window sill, you'll see all the governses that go with it, the hardware and plates. And in this box right here, what you'll see is all the rails that go with it, and what I assume to be the drive screws in this tube right here. Now like I said I am using the dining room for this. Reason being is one, I got a flat surface and two, if something drops I don't have to worry about trying to fish some small grub screw out of underneath some cabinet that I'll never find again. A YouTuber that goes by the name of Aries Workshop came up with the idea of using a bolt and a piece of wood so that way everything keeps centric when assembling this. Me, myself, I use an M5 bolt, or that would be a 5 mil or 3 sixteenths of an inch, and drilled it through and taken a little bit of extra room out for the head of the screw with 11 mil. And what happens is that you take one bearing and place it on it, and then the shim that goes in between the two bearings and then the plastic wheel itself and then come back with another bearing and then you take another piece of wood that's been drilled out with a 3 16 or 5 mil drill place it on top and press down and then you have one nice assembled wheel pretty good trick so 30 more of these and i'll be done to the next stage of assembly okay so it's time to do the y plate assembly and the materials needed to accomplish this are the inner and outer Y plates of course and then we have the precision shim that we're using before a aluminum spacer of six and nine mil the eccentric spacer six mil and m5 button head bolts of 16 25 and 60 mil the nylock nut m5 and, and nut blocks and the drag chain mount and as well we have the extrusion and a eight millimeter spanner or wrench okay so i like to have all my parts and tools ready as you see and what we're going to do is simply flip this thing over and drop in all of the five mil bolts that are or screws that are required And flip it back over and put it in the nut blocks to where the thinner side is up and start to attach the nuts. You don't want to do it all the way down just enough to where there is some wiggle room for the blocks. Okay, so the blocks are in, and I've laid out all the hardware that's going to go into the plates according to the right side of the instruction. Okay, so here's how it's going to go. For We have the top, and then we get the bottom too. Okay, we've got the 60 mil bolts, then we have the 6 mil extrinsic spacers, then we have the two shims, wheels, 9 mil aluminum spacers, wheels again and then the precision shims and then back to the six mil extrinsic spacers okay now then we would have the plate in between there and then we have extrinsic spacers and then the nuts or five mil nuts now on the top side it's exact same 
except that instead of the extrinsic spacers, we have six mil aluminum spacers to go in. And note, when you build these two, they will mirror each other. Okay, do the bottom first and make sure that the circle a bit right there on the extrinsic spacer goes into the plate. Then the washer or shin as it's called. And two wheels. Nine mil spacer. Wheels. Shim. And then again on the sensor eccentric spacer make sure that the wheel portion or round portion of it is facing up this time and now we switch to the top where we just use the six mil aluminum spacer precision shims wheels nine mil spacer Wheels again. Precision shim. Six mil spacer. And then we stop. And flip this over on top of it. Okay. Then add the spacers all the way around. Excuse me, the shims, not spacers. And then the nuts. So on the bottom, make sure that the round part of the eccentric spacer is on the plate. And then tighten it up. And then tighten up the top. According to the instructions, all we do is take the 8mm spanner, which was provided, and move it to where that 6mm is all facing towards the bottom of these plates. So it's time to set the extrinsic spacers, and what I found is that the router mount box functions very well at holding up the plates. So take the extrusion and slide it in there and you see we got a lot of weeble or wobble however you want to call it and the easiest way is just take one at a time and run it back and forth until you feel it take a hold okay so now both of those wheels are spinning with just a couple of turns okay then come to the other side and do the same and just remember, it's small amounts up here, then test. Okay, so I got movement on all four wheels. And there's no weeble or wobble anymore. And that's what you're looking for. So it's now time to do the final step in the Y plate assembly. And we have them both set in side by side right here where the squares are facing each other. And what you want is this one right here and flip it over. Lay the squares to the left as the destruction say so. Then take your drag chain mount and drop in the two 16 millimeter bolts. And then as we have this crescent right here, we go down to the next one where we have these two holes and drop them in. Okay, and then putting two of our, our fingers in there, put it to where it's ever so slightly tilted, and then you can get on the shims, and then hand tighten the nylon nuts. 
maybe. Or nylon, not nylon. And then it's just a matter of tightening everything up. So it's time to do the X carriage and we're going to do the step by step with the parts laid out. Have six 30 mil M5 button head bolts. And for the right side of the assembly, we will have the three eccentric nuts, or excuse me, spacers. And for the left side, we'll have the three aluminum six mil spacers. And from there on, it's all the same, where we'll have the precision shims, the wheel assemblies that we've done, precision shims again, and then the nylock nuts to go onto the Z-plate. So on the Z-plate, you'll see that all the holes on the left side are the same, whereas on the right side out of the five holes, three of them are bigger. Now on the back, we have recessed or countersunk um, holes that these were, will be where the bolts go through. side all the aluminum spacers and on the right side the eccentric spacers with the round bit down then the precision shims and wheel assemblies eccentric nuts again and the precision shims again and finishing off with the nylon nuts. And from there, set it up and tighten it on down, but make sure that the wheels can still move freely. Okay, so it's time to set the eccentric spacers for the plate here. And what we'll do is same as before, except this time it's going to be headed out to the right, the six mil marks that they have. And that one's pretty good. So there. Okay, then we take the extrusion and I put it to where the whole side is facing to plate. Slide it on in. And what we'll do is we'll adjust this one first, then the one on the right, and then in the middle. So like I said, what we're trying to do is tighten up these to where they have small amount of friction on the wheels. So in order for better for you to see this, and as well as I, I'm just putting a small mark on all of them. And that way I should be able to see, and you will be able to see as well, what's going on down there. Okay, so small twist. Okay, so we got that moving. See if I can back it off anymore. Okay, and then we'll do this one on the left side. So I have movement. Yeah, but very tight. So I'll let it off. Okay, but over here, I still need to tighten that up because I lost that. And now all I need to do is tighten up the middle. And I shouldn't say tighten up, it's really just changing the angle. But it does make it tighter. Okay, and that's nice and smooth. Good to go. Okay, so next we have the nut blocks for the x-axis plate. And what we'll do is we'll just drop them in right here, right here, and here. And flip this on over. And then drop in the nut blocks. Just remember that the thinner portion goes top side. Okay, and then drop in the nuts. And that is a 25 mil bolt, just in case you're wondering. Okay, now tighten them up, but make sure that there's still enough room for them to move up and down or side to side, however your view is. I'm just tightening it up enough to where the nut slips into the block. And from there, I can just use the key. Okay, so it's time to attach the Z-axis limit switch. 
into the plate as per instruction. Okay, we have the back side here, We're going to put that face down. And we also have two 2.5 millimeter screws. And they asked for the number two switch, and if you're wanting to know, they have little zip ties on the connectors right here that indicate which ones they are. This one is two, there's a zero, and there's a one as well. Okay, so what we do is take the switch, and I'm having it to where the outer bit of the Z limit switch is on this side, and I'm going to drop it in. So it's time to add on the X access wheels. And for this, we have all of our hardware laid out. We have four 60 millimeter bolts, and for the bottom, this side with the limit switch on it, we have two six millimeter eccentric spacers, two shims, two wheels, two nine mil aluminum spacers, two wheels, two shims, and back to two eccentric six mil spacers. And for the other side of this, we will continue on with two shims and two nylock nuts. Now for the top side, everything will be the same, except instead of the six mil eccentric spacers, we will be using the six mil aluminum spacers for two in their place. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just drop in the bolts. And flip it on over. Now for our bottom side, and that's one with the limit switch, we drop the eccentric nuts. Making sure that the circular section goes into the plate. And then just start dropping in the shims, wheels, 9 mil spacer, wheels again, shims, and we will face the eccentric spacers with the round portion up for the other plate. And then do the top side with the 6 mil spacer, shim, wheel, 9 mil spacer, wheel, shim, and 6 mil spacer. And then take your other plate and just drop it where it needs to be. And then put all the shims and the nuts. And then tighten everything down. Okay, then using the 8 mil spanner, all you gotta do is rotate the eccentric spacers in until the six millimeter is facing down, or in this case up, as I'm using a box to support everything. Okay, then I'm going to save the wiring here and insert the extrusion. And then what I'm going to do is move the six mil spacers, eccentric spacers as previous until we take out the plate. In fact, speaking of as previous, what I'm going to do is add some dashes for the marker. Okay, and right there I have nice smooth movements. Hopefully you can see the lines going back and forth. Okay, so it seems I skipped a step and what I need to do is attach this Z-axis nut block. And what we do is we take that plate right there, put her there, and drop in a couple of M20 or 25 millimeter bolts and a couple of nuts and tighten them on in. And once they're in far enough, all I have to do is just use a key to tighten them the rest of the way. Okay, so it's time to attach both assemblies together. And the right side here should have your centric spacers. 
and just lay the plate on top of each other and then from here we're going to take the 12 mil cap head bolt attach a shim on it and then a lockable washer and place it right there there and there and then tighten everything down into place okay so it's time to do the z-axis extrusion and all we're going to do is slide it where we had it previously and then take eight m5 16 millimeter bolts and the z-axis plates and what's going to happen is that the 90 degree portion is actually going to face out whereas the cutoff portion is going to face in just insert the bolts where it's recessed tighten the top one all the way down while leaving the bottom one loose for future assembly but for the z-axis stepper motor you need a stepper motor one coupler four 50 millimeter cap head bolts and it may deviate here if you do not have the touch probe then all you'll need is two 40 millimeter aluminum spacers but if you do not then you'll need four and then we have the touch probe mount as i do have it and two 35 millimeter spacers okay so on the coupler there are four points to tighten up Okay, we have the two bigger screws right here that will collapse the whole thing and make it singe up. And then we have the two smaller ones right here that will attach to the shaft. Okay, we also have a bigger hole, diameter hole there and a smaller diameter hole there. Quarter inch or six mil if you like metric. Okay, and so what we're going to do is find the flat portion of the shaft and then slide it on so that way the grub screws face flat. Okay, and I'm just going to tighten up a smidge just to hold everything in place so I don't have to be fumbling around working with it. Okay, for orientation, I'm going to have the extrusion facing me and stepper motor the wires are going to be going out the back and what we want to do is drop in two of the 50 millimeter bolts on the right side and then come in with two of the 40 millimeter spacers and then drop them into place right there to where they hit the holes And then we're just going to tighten them up, not all the way though, just to the point where there's a bit of play within the motor. So that way you can get the other side. Okay, then we're going to take the probe mount here and it has a track for the wire to go around. And then we're going to flip it over to again where the wires are facing to the back and drop in the 35 millimeter spacers and slide it under there to where it all mounts or matches up. And then again with the 50 millimeter bolts. And now we're going to tighten everything all the way. All right, so now it's time for the Z-axis screw. And we have the lead screw here. And then we have the flanged radial bearing, two of those, two bearing shims, and two locking collars. As well, we have this to where the bottom is extended all the way out. Okay, if you haven't already done so, take off the identifying piece of plastic for the lead screw labeled C and put it through the bottom plate here and then add on the radial bearing and make sure it, the flange can recess into the plate then add on the shim the bearing shim 
and then the lock collar and make sure that you have the grub screw backed off enough to where it can sink all the way through. Okay, might have to twist it a bit and then we're going to feed it all the way through the middle piece of plastic. Can't think of what it's called right now. And then keep on twisting and, and you can put that back until you start to see it right there it's gone and then we're going to do pretty much everything in reverse is we're going to add on the lock collar and then the shim and lastly the radio bearing make sure that the flange is set so it will recess into the plate Okay, and from here I'm going to loosen up this collar right here, so that way it has plenty of play. And what I'm looking for is to make this lead screw match up halfway into the collar. Okay, and then tighten everything down. So if I rotate that, everything else should rotate. Okay, looks like a good seal. Okay, now as I've worked up, now I'm going to work back down and I'm going to take the flange bearing and shove it into the plate so it's recessed. And then the shim. And then I'm going to take the locking collar and tighten it up this grub screw. Okay, and then rotate around. Yeah, just do a little bit of a shake or shimmy. And this is why they had to keep the plate loose on the bottom. So the bearings recessed in and tighten up the collar and then tighten up the base plate. All right, so next you wanna play with it, see if there's any kind of uh, loose movement. There is none there. The only way that you can move it is by spinning the uh, motor. But if there ever does become play, there is that block that's recessed inside the extrusion unit. You'll have to tighten up. Eventually you will, but not today. So for our last step, we have to put on the drag chain mount to right here. And we have two 16 miller button heads, two shims, and two nylock nuts. Now before we get into that, we have to take the Z limit switch wire and just feed it right through here on the bottom right as it's facing me. And then I'm just going to lay it across as in the chain mount, direct chain mount, there is a groove for that to fit in. And I'm just going to take it up there, let it sit and drop in my two nuts and then flip it on over and then we add the shims and then add the nylock nuts and tighten them on down or up however your perspective is okay so the last step that I'm going to do with this is wrap this up on my fingers and then take that bread tie that was originally on here and rewrap it so that stays out of the way. So that concludes the Will, Y, and X carriage assembly for this video. On the next one, I will tackle the frame or the gantries and router mount. Thank you and take care.